This is our top story at this hour. The high-stakes meeting between U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov in Geneva has not resulted in any major breakthrough over the ongoing Ukraine crisis. However, the two top diplomats have agreed to keep talking to try to resolve a crisis through negotiations. The two leaders met on Friday in Geneva in a bid to defuse escalating tensions between Russia and Ukraine. The U.S. has agreed to provide written responses by next week to Russia's demands that the West scale back its military presence in Eastern Europe. Both sides said that Blinken and Lavrov planned to speak again, and they left the door open for another conversation between President Biden and President Putin to try to resolve the crisis. I told him that following the consultations uh, that we'll have in the coming days with uh, uh, allies and partners, we anticipate that we will be able to share with Russia our concerns and ideas in more detail and in writing next week. And we agreed to further discussions after that. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said that the White House didn't expect any breakthroughs in the meeting, but added that both the countries are now on a clearer path in terms of understanding each other's concerns. We didn't expect any breakthroughs to happen today, uh, but we are on a clearer path in terms of understanding each other's concerns. Uh, the president uh, will meet this weekend at Camp David with his national security team to discuss the, the situation. Russia, meanwhile, has vowed most serious consequences if Washington keeps ignoring its security demands. Moscow has laid out a detailed list of security guarantees, which include a demand that NATO gives up military activity in Eastern Europe and Ukraine. The Blinken-Lavrov meeting happened as an estimated 100,000 Russian troops continue to be deployed near Ukraine's eastern border. Russia's military buildup along the Ukraine border has sparked concerns of a possible military escalation between Russia and Ukraine. Moscow has time and again denied any invasion plans on Ukraine. U.S. President Joe Biden, meanwhile, has left White House for his countryside retreat of Camp David, where he will spend the weekend talking the next steps with national security advisors to bring out a solution to end the conflict. Not only U.S., but other European countries have also joined the calls for Russia to step back. Bulgarian Prime Minister on Friday urged Russia to de-escalate tensions over Ukraine following Geneva talks between the U.S. and Moscow. During a parliament session, Prime Minister Petkov said Bulgaria is a sovereign state and the country made a choice long ago of becoming a NATO member. Despite repeated peace talks attempts, the ongoing tensions at the military front is showing no signs of abetting. The latest the Russian submarine has test fired a caliber cruise missile against a land based target from the Sea of Japan. This is according to Russia's Defense Ministry. This comes amid Russia's announcement that its navy will conduct a series of military drills this month. Russia's Defense Ministry, meanwhile, also released video footage on Friday of its army performing drills in the Voronezh region bordering Ukraine. Ukrainian Joint Forces also shared a video on Thursday of its military performing drills near eastern Ukraine. This comes as tensions continue to mount over what lies ahead in the ongoing conflict. NATO has now rejected demands by Russia to withdraw its forces from Romania and Bulgaria. NATO in a statement said that it will not renounce its ability to protect and defend each other. The Pentagon, meanwhile, has said the USS aircraft carrier and its strike group will participate in a NATO maritime exercise in the Mediterranean, which will continue through February 4th. Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby in a statement said that the, on, the ongoing and the upcoming exercise is not anticipating a Russian move on Ukraine. It wasn't planned back in 2020, anticipating, uh, you know, a, a Russian move on Ukraine, um, and it's not designed, uh, the exercise itself is not designed uh, against uh, the kinds of scenarios that, uh, that might happen with respect to Ukraine. Well, for more on this, we earlier spoke to our correspondent Nick Harper from Washington. This is what he had to say.
The United States has undoubtedly been engaged with frantic diplomacy over the last two weeks. We had Wendy Sherman, the Deputy Secretary of State in Europe, for pretty much the whole of last week. And we've had Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State in Europe, again this week. Uh, that very important meeting with Sergei Lavrov, really an opportunity for the US to once again lay out that it has a red line. If Russian troops move across the border into Ukraine, the United States will consider Consider that an invasion. And Anthony Blinken said in remarks to the press afterwards that there would be a swift, severe and united response from the United States and its partners, namely NATO. There has been this warning throughout this week, echoed by President Biden, that there would be a steep price to play for Russia if it were to invade. But as you noted, we had this 90-minute meeting and yet there is still no breakthrough. There's no obvious resolution to this escalation of tensions. Anthony Blinken says that he will be returning here to Washington to discuss matters with President Biden and other lawmakers here in the US Capitol. They will provide Russia with those written responses next week and they hope that they'll be able to meet again, perhaps in person, at some point next month. But at this stage, it's still not clear exactly how a breakthrough may be achieved. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.